Nas vai mi coceva da Sarimo Come on, the film music, everybody. Lift your voice, turn it something so when I sing it you sing after me are we ready same song same song I promise so it is okay can you try okay that's right can you try? And you say Tani want to beg a because Baba no can you say? Tiny 
Yeah. 
Beat the rock. Stop the music. Let the rock lift your voice. Lift your voice. The Lord.
I want you to give God a shout. Come on, young people. Your power is in your strength. And shouting is not just noise. It's the sound of victory. Come on, if you know that you're on the winning side, shout to the Lord. One more time, shout to the Lord. Lord. Amen. Can we have our seat quickly? Okay, I still feel like some people still have some shouts. Okay, let it off. Glory. Amen. All right. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> okay, okay, it's fine. Good evening. All right. So, we do something in church. We tell you to look at your neighbor left and right and smile to them. And now tell them you're welcome to youth rally. So, you can change seats on the basis of frowning. Frowning is wrong. Right? And let's do something further. Can you look at your neighbor and compliment something about them? Just something. If you don't have something to compliment, you are the one something. <laughs> the hair, the smile, the shoes, the dress, the cap, the dreads, the necklace, the shirt. Just something. Okay, let's do one more thing. Can you bring out your phone and take a selfie with your neighbor? Can we do that? You can, from here, have business partners, even life partners. Who knows? <laughs> so just do that quickly. Take a selfie with your neighbor. You can post on your Instagram pages, stories, Twitter. All right, are we done? Amen. Okay, so quickly, I'm here to call up Pastor Garrett. But before then, I wanted to, I have permission from Pastor to share just a bit of experience I had when I visited Singapore. All right, so I just scrolled through my notes and I said, what am I going to share out of all the things that I heard? And the thing that stuck out for me is that as young people or as a church, we, we should be culture shapers. And uh, one of the things I'm here to say quickly is that don't leave here only to fit in again. All right, when you leave here, make a choice to stand out. How many of you know that it takes a lot of boldness to stand out? And the Bible says that do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed. In other words, don't look like them, but stand out. Now, you don't have to follow the trend. You can be the trend. Do you know that? <laughs> you can be the trend. Okay, so you can tell someone that you don't have to follow the trend. You can be the trend. <laughs> All right. So... Are we making a decision right now that when we leave here, we are choosing to stand out? Do we understand that? All right, so that is a church full of young people setting the culture. And the truth is that we can do the same. You have all that it takes. You don't need anything extra. All you need to do is just to leave out the things that God has called us right, to do. Okay, I have two more minutes, but I'm actually done. <laughs> all right, so with a standing ovation right now, can we welcome all the way from Singapore, HOGC Pastor Garrett. Come on, shout now. Energy, energy. Hey, come on, let's give Jesus the loudest praise in the house today. You guys look fantastic here. I love what Pastor Adomi said. You can be the trend. You can set the trend. Wow, you guys are incredible. You know, the first thing I want to say is this. I think the coolest people of all of Lagos is here tonight, right now. You know, I, I mean this, if you go outside of the church right now, they don't look so cool. But because you are here, I think all the cool people are here, give yourselves a big hand. Amen. And you may take a seat. You know, the first thing I want to say to all of you here tonight is this, that having this youth rally 
It's very special and unique. You know, not every church would spend budget, effort, energy to hold a rally for the young people of Lagos. That's why, you know what, the Covenant Nation Church, Pastor Poju, Pastor Toin, they are incredible pastors because they have a heart for all of you. So, you know what, you've got to thank God for pastors like Pastor Poju, Pastor Toin. Let's honor them. Let's celebrate them. Appreciate their heart for young people. Incredible. Yeah. We thank God for pastors like them. Amen. Because of that, of them, you are blessed. You know, I, this is my first time in Nigeria. And I love it here. I, I, love, I love the culture. I love the food. I love the fashion. But most of all, I love the people here. You guys are the friendliest people. Not just the coolest, but the friendliest people in the whole planet Earth. And uh, so I love Nigeria. But there's one thing that I do not understand about Nigeria. The thing is this, all right? When I came into Nigeria, they asked me to take a yellow fever vaccination. And I was thinking to myself, why do I need a yellow fever vaccination? You know what? I'm Chinese. Every time I have a fever, it's already a yellow fever. <laughs> oh, that's the other thing I love about you guys. You guys have a sense of humor. <laughs> you guys are funny people, amen? But really, I love, I love Nigeria, and you guys are incredible. One more time, give yourselves a big hand. You know, we come uh, all the way from Singapore, Pastor Hal, Pastor Liam, my senior pastors, and the entire team. Uh, we came, flew many hours to be here, and we are just so happy to be here today. Uh, we come from a church called Heart of God Church in Singapore, and uh, I know some of you may not have been to Singapore before, so right now, I have a short video to introduce you to Heart of God Church in Singapore a little bit more. So one, two, three, let's roll the video. We welcome you to our church, and today I want you to know that halfway around the world, there are young people as passionate for Jesus as you guys here. You know what? They are loving Jesus, and you are loving Jesus in the same way as well. Amen? Amen. 
So today, you know what, we want to get into the Bible, and I want to share with you a story in the Bible about two men of God, and their names are Elijah and Elisha. Elijah and Elisha. I remember uh, Elijah is the one that is the older, represents the older generation, and Elisha was the disciple of Elijah. And both of them were great men of God, prophets that God used mightily. You know, when I was growing up as a young Christian, I used to be very confused by Elijah and Elisha. I was like, why did the Bible make their names so similar? You know, I cannot remember who is who. I always mix them up until I learned a little trick. All right, the trick is Elijah is spelled with a J and Elisha is spelled with the letter S. So when you know your alphabet song like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? You know that J comes before an S. So that is how I will always remember that Elijah comes before Elisha. So I hope that helps you as well. So, but anyway, let's look into the Bible right now in 1 Kings chapter 19. And the Bible says this story, and it says here, So Elijah went from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat, and he was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen, and he himself was driving the twelve pair. And Elijah went up to him, threw his cloak around him, and then Elijah, Elisha then left his oxen and ran after Elijah. So here we see Elijah being the more senior one. He is looking for a disciple. He's looking for someone that will do the work of God as well. And he found this man called Elisha. So I want to talk a little bit about Elisha's life. From these verses that we have read early on, it's interesting because we know that Elisha was father, was in a family that is successful because his father is known. They called him Elisha, the son of Shaphat. Because if no one knew who the father was, what's the point of putting his name in? It's like, Shaphat who? But Shaphat was a famous person in that time. And so his father was successful. And, and he could also see it because he was, had, was supervising 12 yoke of oxen. And so that means that there were tw- they owned 24 oxen. And in those days, owning 24 oxen means that you are pretty rich. It is almost like you have a business, an oxen business. And there, at that point in time, what was Elisha doing? Elisha was plowing with one yoke of oxen, and there were other yoke of oxen. So it goes to show that Elisha was in a rich family, probably. His father was successful. The father had a successful business. And Elisha was kind of dipping his toes into this business that his father had. He was plowing a yoke of oxen, knowing that one day all 12 yoke of oxen will be his inheritance. He will one day take over his father's business. So you can imagine the situation that Elisha was in. He was living a comfortable life. His future was set. He was going to take over his father's successful business. In fact, his life is set. He can go on to live what you call a soft life. (laughs) You know, he could live a comfortable life. He could Instagram, he could TikTok about it. But then this day came when Elijah, we look back in the verse, Elijah found Elisha. And what he did was he threw his cloak around him. And what does the cloak here represent? The cloak here represents the calling of God. So Elijah came and God called Elisha. There was a calling on God on young Elisha that day. So in the same way today, I want to say that God has a calling for you. Just as how God called Elisha when he was a young boy, God is calling the young people in Nigeria today, the young people in this service here today. God has a calling for your life. God has a calling. God has a purpose in your, for your life. You know, some of us may think, you know, I, I used to think this way growing up as well, that, hey, I'm just one person out of seven billion people on this planet Earth. You know, who am I? I'm just a speck in the population of the world. 
But you know what? God says no. God says, I know you, I love you, and I have a purpose for your life. Every single one of you here today, God has a purpose. God has a calling for your life. God wants you to do great things for Him. God didn't just put you on this earth to just go to school, graduate, get a good job, go on with life, have kids, have family, you know, and just give birth, and this whole life cycle just continues on and on. There is more that God has in store for your life. You know, I believe among here, God is calling some of you here to be a pastor one day. To some of you here, God is calling you to be missionaries, evangelists, people on the wor- uh, 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 worship leaders that will bring the presence of God to people around. God is calling leaders, godly leaders in politics, godly leaders in, in the marketplace, in the business world. God is calling full-time staff that will serve in church, that will, that will dedicate their lives to God among all the young people. God has a calling for your life. You know, why don't you find someone next to you and say, God has a calling for your life. <laughs> Amen. God has a calling for your life. And maybe for some of you here, you know, you look at yourself and you think, hey, I'm so young. I'm only 12, 13, 14 years old. You know, what can God do with my life? You know what? In Heart of God Church, we always say this, that youths are leaders of today, not just tomorrow. So even if you are 12, 13, 15, 16 years old, God says you can be a leader. I am calling you to rise up, to be a leader in your generation. You have a purpose and you have a calling upon your life. God has called you for a life that is greater than what you are living right now. In the same way that God called Elisha, God is calling every single one of you here today for something greater. God has a purpose for your life. So, you know what? When God calls us, there are two responses that we can have. Two responses when God calls us. Number one, we could either ignore the call, ignore the call or number two, we could choose to ignite the call. We could either ignore the call or we could ignite the call. So every one of us here tonight, we are faced with this crossroad we are faced with this decision in our life, just as how Elisha faced. You know what? Elisha, when Elijah threw his cloak upon Elisha, he could have, number one, ignored the call. and says, I'm going to continue doing this. I'm going to continue just plowing my father's plows. And one day I'm going to, you know, take over my father's business. I'm going to have a successful life. I'm going to have a comfortable life. He could either ignore the call, uh, ignore the call or he could choose to ignite the call. But most of you here would know the story that Elisha chose not to ignore the call, but he chose to ignite the call. And in the same way, tonight I pray, as God is calling you, will you not ignore the call of God, but will you ignite the call of God that God has for you because God has a greater purpose. God has a greater destiny for each and every one of you. Amen? Amen. Will you ignite the call? So how do we ignite the call? So let's look at the life of Elisha. What did Elisha do when he got the call of God upon his life? You see, what number one, what he did was that he had immediate obedience. Look with me in the Bible once again, in 1 Kings chapter 19. It says here, Elisha then left his oxen and ran after Elijah. You know what? Elisha had immediate obedience. He didn't tell Elijah, okay, wait for me. Wait five years, then I will come and look for you. He didn't say, uh, um, 
Elijah, I'm, I'm not so ready right now. I still have to, you know, do, do certain things in my life. I still need to uh, go to party a little bit more, hang out with my friends a little bit more. I'm going to, you know, do whatever, all the fun things, YOLO a little bit. Then I'll be ready to follow you. He didn't say, you know, you know let me, you know, finish my studies, get a good career, a stable job. When I'm 35, when I'm 40, then I will follow you. No, Elisha had immediate obedience. He didn't say, God, wait for me five years. God, wait for me 10 years. He had immediate obedience for God. Amen? So in the same way, today, as God is calling, you know, sometimes I know we say, God, give me three years. Give me five years. Give me 10 years. Wait till I'm a little bit older. No. Like I said, youths are leaders today, not just tomorrow. Today, God is calling you today. Will you rise up in your churches? Will you rise up as a leader? Will you rise up to the call that God has for you? You see, friends, you must know our God. God is not looking for abilities, but God is looking for availability. You see, some of us here, we, you know, I knew growing up as a young boy as well, I used to look at myself, I was a shy, timid little boy. You know, one thing that I was so shy that once we had a youth event in my church and they needed to order pizzas. So how do you order pizzas? You got to call the pizza delivery, right? I was so shy, I didn't dare to call the pizza delivery man. That was how shy I was. I looked at myself. I didn't have anything. I, but, I, but I knew one day that God says, I, Garrett, I'm not looking for your abilities or how skilled or how talented you are. Will you make yourself available to me? So today, in the same way, maybe some of us, we may look down on ourselves, but hey, God is not looking at your abilities. God is looking for people who says, God, I am available here I am. Use me, God. Here I am. I make my heart available to you. I make my life available to you. And when we do that, God will use your life. The skills, the abilities will come. The anointing will come when you make yourself available to God. Amen? So how do we ignite the call? It's about immediate obedience. And, and another thing is this, that how do you know that our lives is made up of the decisions that we make? See, one thing I've learned about life is that the decisions we make today will determine our destiny tomorrow. The decisions we make today will determine our destiny tomorrow. You know, right now, you know, I may look young, <laughs> but I'm actually close to 40 years old right now. And, uh, and I want to say that as a 40-year-old, as I look back at my life, you know, so I'm speaking to all the youths here tonight. Can I have some heart-to-heart -heart with you? You know, as I look back at my life at 40 years old, I begin to realize that where I am today is made up of the decisions that I made when I was a youth. When I was 15, 16, 17 years old, it was the decisions that I made that brought me to where I am today. You see, sometimes we have the misconception that, okay, when I'm, the, the, the decisions when I make at, at 30 years old will affect me at 30 years old. The decisions I make at 40 years old will affect me at 40 years old. No. I want to say that the decisions you make today will determine your destiny tomorrow. So where I am today was because of the decisions I made for God when I was just a teenager, just like many of you here right now. So God has called many of you tonight. And in the same way, what are decisions that you need to make for God today? And that will determine your destiny tomorrow. God has a great plan. God has a great destiny for each and every one of you. Amen? So how did Elisha ignite the call? Number one, he had immediate obedience. What else? Number two, he had total surrender. Because you look at the verse with me again in 1 Kings chapter 19. They said, so Elisha left him and went back. He took his yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. 
and he burned the plowing equipment and cooked the meat. You see, so Elisha, he went back and he killed the cow and burned the plowing equipment. You know, when I think about that, I think, hey, wow, that sounds like an overkill. I mean, literally overkill. And, and, and I was thinking to myself, you know, he could have followed Elijah and not have to kill the oxen, not have to burn the yoke, the plows. Why did he have to do that? And I began to learn that that is the attitude that Elisha had when he wanted to ignite his call. He says that, God, I want to have total surrender to you because the plows, the oxen, it represented his old life. It represented his dreams. It represented his security. It represented the worldly things that he held on to. But he says, God, I want to surrender it to you. I want to have total surrender. You know, it was his statement to say, God, you know, I'm not just going to have 50% in church and the things of God and 50% in the world. You know, he was not saying that, God, let me just try this church thing, this God thing, this call that you have for my life. And if it doesn't work out, I still have a plan B. I still can go back to my old life. I can still go back. No, Elijah said, I'm going to burn that bridge. There is no turning back. I have total surrender to God and says, God, this is the life I've chosen and I'm going to live for you. There is no turning back. And I love it. You know what he did? After he slaughtered the cows, he threw a party. So everyone knew about it. He was celebrating. He was not ashamed of his calling, but he was proud of it. He was telling his entire village, his entire town, that come and party with me and eat the beef and the steak because I am going to live my life for Jesus Christ. He was proud about it. He was excited about it as well. So, friends, today God is calling you. Will you either ignore the call or tonight will you choose to say, God, I want to ignite the call that you have upon my life. So tonight, will we have immediate, sur- immediate obedience and total surrender? You know, as I look at all the great men of God and the people that I interact with, you know, every great man of God and man and woman of God, they, at one point in their life, had to ignite the call of God on their lives. I mean, you think about it. When I, when I hear the story about Pastor Poju, you know, he was just a university student where God called him to start the Covenant Nation Church, where God called him to be a pastor. God didn't call him when he was 40 years old. God called him as a youth, as a student in university. And he, at a young age, he shows that God, I'm going to have immediate obedience. I'm not going to start a church when I'm 40, but I'm going to start a church right now. I'm not going to be a pastor when I'm 50. I'm going to be a pastor right now. And he had immediate obedience and he had total surrender because he had to give up things in his life, give up a secure future in his life to start this church. Same thing for Pastor Toyin when you know her story. She ignited her call. See, the same thing it is for even my senior pastors, Pastor Hao and Pastor Lear. You know, our church started close to 30 years ago. You know what? Pastor Hao and Pastor Lear, they had, they had to ignite their call as well. At a point in time, you know, Pastor and Pastor Lear, when they started the church, they were only 26 years old. You know, maybe some of you here, you are 26 years old, or just close to 26. Guess what? At a young age, they said, you know, Pastor Lear had a successful journalist uh, career. Pastor Howe had a, a, a successful family business to take over. But at that point in time, they had immediate obedience and total surrender. Says, God, we're going to ignite our call, and we are going to start a church for young people. And look at where God brought them today. Today, we have a church in Singapore with thousands and thousands of young people because years ago, they made a decision to ignite their call for Jesus. And I'm so thankful that they did that because I would not be here if they had not ignited their call. Amen. Let's give my pastors a big hand. (laughs) 
friends, all of us, God has a call from our, for our lives, and we need to ignite that call. You know, one of the moments for my life where I had to ignite my call was when I was a teenager at about 18 years old. So can I share a little bit about my life with you? So a little Singaporean boy's life, all right? And so when I was young, my parents had a divorce, so they were separated. And so my mom was the main person that was raising me up. So of course, my, my mom had great dreams for my life. She worked hard so that uh, she could earn money for my, my studies and education. And she had dreams that one day I was, you know, going to go overseas, get a great education and get a good career, a good job. And that was her dreams for me. So it reached a point in my life at, at 18 years old, you know, where, where I was faced with a decision in my life. Because at that point in time, I... I, I did well in my studies, and my mom had enough money to send me overseas for education. So they, she wanted me to go to the, the U United States to get a good education, good, good certificate, so that I can get a great job and get a successful, comfortable career. But however, I remember as a 18 year, 16, 17-year-old boy, God had called me. In one of my time with God, God spoke to me and says, Garrett, you're going to be a pastor one day. I have called you to be a pastor in Heart of God Church. And I knew at that point in time that I, I'm not going to be able to leave four years uh, from Heart of God Church. Because if I were to go overseas to study, it means four years away from Singapore, four years away from church. And th those were the crucial years of our church. And I know that if I were to leave at that point in time, I would shortchange my destiny. I would shortchange what my, my opportunity to grow in God, to serve in church, be part of what God is doing. So I knew I couldn't do it. So at that point in time, I had to make a decision. Do I go overseas to study or do I stay at home and ignite my call and say, God, here I am, God. I want to make myself available to you to serve you. So at that point in time, you know what? It was a difficult decision, not because... You know, firstly, if I had gone overseas to study, I would get a good certificate, a, you know, a stable career, get a good job, earn lots of money. And that's a dream for many people. But more than that, for me, because you must understand Asian family. You know, in Singapore, we don't have lions, but we have tigers. We call them tiger moms. <laughs> so in Asia, the moms have a lot of say in your life and you're really scared of your moms. So, so I remember I was afraid because when I rejected going overseas to study, it's more than just rejecting my dreams, but it was rejecting what my mom's dreams were for my life. And it was not easy when I told her, Mom, I, I want to be a pastor one day. The claws came up. <laughs> I said, Mom, I'm not going overseas to study. I want to stay in Singapore. Like, Of course she was upset. Of course she was angry. But I knew that I had to ignite my call. And says, God, I'm going to stay here and serve you. I'm going to ignite. I'm going to have immediate obedience and total surrender. My future is in your hands, oh God. God, I want to live the call that you have for my life. Amen. So that's what I had to do. And, and because of that, today, like I said, the decisions I made when I was an 18-year-old boy determined the destiny I had today. So the decisions you make as a young boy, young girl, is going to affect when you're 30, 40 years old. So today, I'm a senior pastor in my church. Today, I'm right here in Nigeria preaching to you. <laughs> that wouldn't have happened. If, eight, if when I was 20 years ago, I, I didn't make that decision, if I had just ignored the call, guess what? I wouldn't be here today. I may have a comfortable career. I may have a good certificate, but I won't be here today. But thank God, 20 years ago, I chose to ignite the call. And that's why today I'm a senior pastor in my church. I'm preaching to you. 
You know, I shared with you, I gave up the opportunity to go overseas for his education. Guess what? God made it one full circle. I did my Masters of Divinity in the US in Oral Roberts University. You see, God never short changes us. When we choose to live according to God's call for our lives. Amen? So at this point in time, I'd like to invite someone from our team up, Pastor Martin, to share his story to all of you, all right? Because he also had to ignite his call. So let's give Pastor Martin a big hand. Thank you, Pastor Garrett. Hey, everyone. I'm Pastor Martin. And I came to Heart of God Church as a young working adult. And after graduating from university, I joined the Singapore Police Force. And it was a stable career, great job, uh, it had great pay. And then in 2003, I passed a highly grueling selection and one-year training into the Elite Special Tactics and Rescue Unit, which is the Singapore's version of the US SWAT team. Yeah, so that was me, very much slimmer. Now I have been blessed, <laughs> very much, horizontally. Well, the selection was very tough. In fact, it started with 100 applicants, but only five of us made it through at the end. So on the screens, you see our graduation photo. It was a dream come true. I would be doing in reality what most guys only saw in the movies or played on computer games. We were trained to rescue hostages, handle terrorist incidents, and deal with the most dangerous criminals in Singapore. In the unit, we arrested kidnappers and dangerous gunmen who planned to commit murder and robberies in Singapore. But no worries, Singapore is very safe. We rarely encounter such incidents, so you guys can come. So when everyone was sound asleep at night at 3 a.m., I'm on rooftops chasing after armed gunmen. I also work with the U.S. Secret Service to protect U.S. Presidents Barack Obama and George W. Bush when they were in Singapore. Yeah, all glory to God. And I also believe that it was also God's blessing that within five years, I was promoted to become the deputy commanding officer or the number two guy in the whole unit. So it was really exciting stuff, and I was really happy doing that. But it was exhausting. You see, my wife is also very involved in church. And deep down, I also wanted to do more in church. But there was just no time and there was just no more energy to do anything else because my job took up all of me. And so one day after work, I remember I just collapsed at the front gate of my house in total exhaustion, unable to get up. Wondering, why am I doing this and who was I doing this for? And somehow, I had that nagging feeling that there must be something more to this life. And a sense of frustration started to grow within me. And I knew then that God was calling me to live a life of significance and not just a life of success. But I could not do that with a career that I was in. And I know in order to do all that God has called me to do, I needed to leave my job. However, it was not so easy to leave because when I shared with my bosses at that time that I was thinking of resigning, they were totally shocked. One by one, they met up with me to discourage me from resigning. And I remember it was at this time when my commanding officer at that time was dropping hints that I would soon take over his role as the commanding officer of the unit. You know, it's a prestigious role to be the commanding officer. In all 30, 18 years of the history of the unit, there have only been six commanding officers. And I could very well be number seven. It was a golden opportunity to be in a position where most people can only dream in their lifetime. One of my bosses, a two-star general, 
even ask me, why in the world would you give up being the commanding officer of an elite special forces unit to do something else in life? My bosses kept trying to sow doubts about what I heard from God. And at that time, I was also on the pension scheme offered by the government. So this meant that if I were to continue to be in the police until I retired at 62 years old, the government would pay me a pension based on my rank. And I was on track to become at least the equivalent of a one-star general in the police force. So that means when I retire, I could get a pension that could be close to 750,000 US dollars. But actually, if you think about it, at that time I would be 62. What am I going to do with the money? <laughs> pay my hospital bills? Pay for my funeral maybe? You see, friends, I did not want to only start serving God when I am 62 years old. I wanted to give God my best years now. I wanted my life to start counting for God right now. So even though my job in the police made the difference between life and death, but the life with God made a difference between heaven and hell. It was so much more significant than having a stable and comfortable life. So despite all the discouragement from bosses having to give up my pension, I knew I could trust God's word. So there was no turning back. I wanted to be all in for God. And so I decided to resign from the police force. And then I joined my wife's small education business. It was a startup and could or not pay me as well as what the police force was paying me. But I had more time to do the things of God. And because of that, I grew in God, grew in my leadership. I led a few connect groups. I even led a few mission trips overseas. And I even had time to do my Masters of Divinity at Oral Roberts University. So today, I am the missions pastor of Heart of God Church, making an impact and seeing lives change all over the world, whilst also running a business. My wife, May Ann, is also a lay pastor, and she is the children's church pastor in church. And we are thoroughly enjoying what we do today. But that's not all we also realize that as we choose to build God's house, He will never shortchange us because God blessed us and grew our business so much that today we can give to the church financially as well. We are able to live our best lives because we chose to put God first above our ambitions and our careers. So friends, I came to church very similar to many of you sitting here as a young adult in my 20s, I thought I had a good plan chasing after success and a good career. But never did I expect that God had an even better plan. It was only when I obeyed His call for my life that now, today, I'm able to live a life of significance and not just success. So friends, make a decision today to obey God's call and surrender your life completely to Him. And God will show you an even greater life. Thank you. Hey, let's give Pastor Martin a big hand. What an incredible story. Amen. So today I want to share with you, will you ignite the call? And I just want to share one thing. You know, you heard me giving up my overseas studies or Pastor Martin giving up his career. Okay, you must understand one thing about God. God's desire, God is not a strict old man in heaven wanting to make you, your life suffer and want you to have a terrible life. I want to, no, God's desire is not to take away from us, but God's desire is to take first place in our lives. God is not, because look at my life, look at Pastor Martin's life. You see, God was not interested in taking away my opportunity to go overseas to study, but God was saying, He's testing my heart to say, Garrett, will you put me as first place in my life? And guess what? When I say, God, I surrender to you, I put you first. God never shortchanges me. God gave me the opportunity to study overseas as well. 
you know, Pastor Martin, you know, it was hard for him to give up his career. It didn't make sense. But God's desire is to say, God saying to him, well, I, will, you, will you let me take first place in your life? And he says, yes, God. And let God take first place. And God today also has turned around and blessed him. God never shortchanges him. God blessed him in his business. Today, him and his wife are successful business owners as well. At the same time, being pastors in the church, impacting lives. So tonight, you know, I don't want you to leave with an impression that God is a, just a very nasty old man in heaven wanting to make your life suffer. No. God is asking you, will you let me take first place in your life? Will you have total surrender to me? Will you surrender your life? Oh, whatever, your dreams, your desires, your security, what the world says your life should be, what society says your life should be. He says, God, I surrender it to you because, God, I want you to take first place in my life. So, friends, you know, the Bible tells us that Elisha, in his whole entire life, he went on to do many miracles for God. In fact, there were a total of 16 miracles attributed to Elisha. So Elisha's life could have been known for a successful business owner with 20, 12 yoke of oxen. But he chose, if he had ignored the call, he would just be known for the 12 yoke of oxen. But because he chose to ignite the call, his life is now known for the 16 miracles that God had used him to do to touch lives and to bring the glory of God and the presence of God into this world. So I want you to, you to ask, your question, ask yourself this question. Will your life today, at the end of your life, do you want your life to be known for 12 yoke of oxen or 16 miracles? Will your life you know, maybe when you're 60 years old, 70 years old, when you look back at your life, do you want your life to be known for 12 yoke of oxen? Or will you want your life to be known for the 16 miracles that God has used you to bring the love of Jesus Christ, to bring the presence of God, to bring the power of God and impacted, impacting lives and thousands and thousands of lives? Tonight, will you not ignore the call, but will you ignite the call? And one last thing that I want to share with all of you here tonight. All the young people. No one, no one else can ignite your call. Only you can. No one else can ignite your call. Only you can. For my life, I mean, I have great pastors. But Pastor Ha and Pastor Lee could not ignite the call for my life. Only I could ignore the, ignite the call for my life. So in the same way, you know, all the young people here, your, your pastors cannot ignite the call for your life. Your parents cannot ignite, ignite the call for your life. It has to be your decision. At 12, 14, 15, 16, 17 years old, the decisions you make today will determine your destiny tomorrow. Today, will you choose to ignite the call? Ignite your call. Some of you here, you, use, you just come to church because your parents come to church. You sing the songs, you read the Bible because your parents tell you to read. You cannot just live on the fire of your parents. You cannot just live on the fire of your pastors and your church leaders. Tonight, you need to ignite your call. It is your decision and only your decision to make. Amen. Come stand out and be on your feet tonight. You know, tonight the presence of God is here. And I just feel that we want to come into a moment where it's between us and God. So may I invite just every eye to be closed from the front to the back. 
The presence of God is here right now. And I believe God is speaking to many of you right now. God is calling many of you. Don't think that you're too young. But God is calling my son, my daughter. I have a greater life in store for you. Will you I have a call, a purpose for your life bigger than what society says, what people say. I have a purpose for your life. To some of you, God is calling you to full-time ministry, to be a pastor one day, to be a church leader, or to bring God into the marketplace or God into different realms of the world. God is calling you tonight. God is calling you tonight. And as God is calling you, we have a choice to make. Do we ignore the call and say, God, it's not for me, God, I'm just going to, I'm too young, or God, I'm not ready. Or tonight, will you say, God, I want to have immediate obedience. God, I want to surrender my life to you, oh God. God, I want to ignite the call that you have for me. Because I know even though I may be young today, but the decisions I make tonight will determine my destiny tomorrow. So I wonder how many of you here, you say, God, I want to ignite my call. God, I don't want to be a nominal Christian anymore but I want to be a Christian that's 100% sold out to you, on fire for you, oh God. I don't want to live on my parents' fire anymore. I don't want to live on my, my church leaders or my pastor's fire anymore, but God, I want to ignite your call in my life. I want to love you. I want to have a relationship with you, God. So today... It is a moment of decision. I wonder how many of you, God is calling you. And tonight you say, God, I choose to ignite the call. I make the decision, God, to say, God, I'm going to surrender my life to you. And if that's you, you know, I want to give you an opportunity to ignite that call. And as we sing this song, as the worship team leads us with this song, you know what, I want to invite you, says God, I want to ignite that call. Will you come to the front of the stage? Will you come to the altar symbolically and saying, God, I lay down my life before you. God, I want to ignite that call. So if that's you right now, he says, God, I want to respond to you. Will you come to the front? You say, God, I want to ignite the call. Will you come to the front right now? One, two, and three. I surrender the all to you. Everything I give to you. I'm withholding nothing, withholding nothing, 
Hallelujah. Today, if you have responded to God, God sees your heart. God sees you. God is not looking for abilities, but God is looking for those who are available. And today, if you, if you say, God, I want to ignite my call, you know what? You can still come to the front. It's a sign to God. But for all of those you at the front, I want to say that tonight, God's going to put a bigger dream in your heart. God's going to put a bigger vision in your life. And God says, I've got a greater plan and a greater destiny for your life. Will you trust me, God, as you surrender your life to me? I'm going to use your life to do many great, amazing, amazing miracles through your life. And through your life, I'm going to use you to impact many, many people. Tonight, God is raising up leaders, leaders in this house, leaders in this nation, leaders that will lead for you, O oh God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. And for the rest of you here tonight, I just sense in my heart that God is saying, huh, don't just be satisfied with where your life is right now. God says, I have something more. I have something greater. Will you trust me? Will you trust me? I have a great plan and a great purpose for your life, oh God more. And Lord, I pray that tonight, more than just the music, more than just the lights, tonight, God, we want an encounter with you. Tonight, God, we want to hear your voice. We want to hear your voice. We want an encounter with you. So as we sing this song one more time, will we let God speak to us? Will we hear from God? Will we encounter Him tonight?
So God, today, use us, Lord. And God, I know you have a call for the young people here in Nigeria, Lord. And God, you're going to raise up leaders, leaders in your church, leaders in this nation. And God, use the leaders of today. And God, that they will change the world for you, O Lord. So God, we thank you. We love you. And we pray all this in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. And all God's people say, come on, let's give God all the glory in this house. People have made choices for the future. It's something to rejoice about. Sorry, please, if you came out and you're back to your seat, please, can you come back forward and follow the line here to my left, please? If you came out, let's keep clapping, please. Don't go back to your seat. We'd like to have a short meeting with you. To my left. Keep clapping, keep clapping. Amen. All right, I think someone is still coming. We can keep clapping. Amen. All right. Amen. Glory to God. Can we, I want us to do something quickly. I want us to um, scream, hold on first. A very big thank you, Pastor Kwaju. Hold on first before you do it. Because it is rare to see someone who has a heart for young people. And to do this, you know, deliberately <laughs> just for young people. Are we ready? Do we think, do we, think we should do that? So do, thank you, Pastor Koju, and we'll say thank you, Pastor Tony. Is that fine? So on the count of three, we'll shout as loud as we can. Are we ready? So one, two, three. And then Pastor Tony, thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor Koju and Pastor Tony. God bless you, Sa and Ma. All right, can have a seat quickly. Amen. I... I want to check something before I, before we call up, you know, the next person. I just want to check something. So let's check. Let's do. <laughs> so who knows? I delete my life and I mind my business. Okay. That's my business. Okay, you guys are ready. So who knows? Me know they do forecasting. Okay. <laughs> you guys are really ready. <laughs> so I, I, I believe, I always say everywhere, if I had someone, I think it's Pastor Jude, I always say, yeah, the essay to great man, because <laughs> I always shout about great man. For me, he's one of the most exceptional artists we have around. So are we ready for the energy? Are we ready for the melody man? Okay, he, he, has, he has an online name, HK. You know what's HK? You put on HK. Great man, you got to give us some small education. <laughs> all right, with a stand innovation and with all the energy you have, can we welcome on stage, great man, take it. said thank you Pastor Kojo and thank you Pastor Tony but I want us to say it again. Turn around we're going to say thank you DJ Paul. Come on. That's right. 
That's right. One more time. One more time. That's what. Yeah. What? Ah, uh, these guys are stuck here. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Everybody say thank you, DJ Pope. I don't know why people are not giving Pastor Toy her own nickname. Should we, is it until we say DJ Mope? Eh? Everybody say thank you, Pastor Toy. Thank you, Pastor You know, to be honest, I'm just really grateful for, for their lives and what they have, you know, made up their minds to do with the youth. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, Pastor um, Garrett, for that message. It's so amazing. I mean, Nigerians, we think we have good genes. This man is almost 40. Look at him. You go to say, nah, circular disc is just finished. You get. And um, I followed the messages of Pastor Howe and Pastor Leah yesterday and such amazing minds. Let's just, let's just celebrate them. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for what you do for the kingdom, even in Singapore. Thank you. Are you guys ready? Are you sure? Wait, what should we start with? <laughs> hmm. Everybody say leave on. Are you ready? All praise to the Lord. God know they like the flesh. I they bring my cup. Okay, okay. For the people that don't know it. Because we have to, everybody has to be carried along today. All right? Okay. Are you ready? <laughs> She's already jumping. So, one, two, go. Everybody say, leave him. Hey, hey, all praise to the Lord. All praise to the Lord. Give him. Hey, God know the word. God know they like the flesh. Kill him. Hey, hey, I they bring my cup. I they bring my cup. Fill him. Hey, one, two, three. Everybody say, leave him. Leave him. Hey, hey, all praise to the Lord, all praise to the Lord, give him. Hey, God know they want, God know they like the flesh, kill him. Hey, hey, I do bring my cup, I do bring my cup. All right, let's go. Hey, hey, drill, drill, real, 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 real. Are you ready? Whoa. Kill her! Hey, hey, I'll bring my cup. 
You know the verse, you know the verse, two, three, say. God in me is me, this God for life, this is my boy Chini. Shout to the day one fellas, shout to the ones who they rep my city. Man, them know I'm stunting when I come through some assault at Kitty. Pull up with the gang, my guys, where they come from, sky, where they come to your pee pee. Round all round, I take them pound for pound, they come from. Two knees down when I wrestle, I don't need guns, I don't need no cape on. Chef with a hard man flow, if you bring beef everywhere, it don't stew now. Three boys thrown in the fire, I'm with the four, that's two plus two now. Wavy guy with the ocean flow, your small is still river bank. I'm with the all time high, y'all better miss me with this gun. Pop up bass don't work for me, everything I need got done for me. Y'all gonna fill in my shoes, I don't miss words when I tell them. Viva, wait, see the Lord be my horse. Where my boat is stuck in the desert, see the Lord be my horse. Make a way where there is no way, she loves me. Set my feet upon solid rock, now I'm pulling proof from you. Yeah, all because he died for me. I'm one with the sun, I'm one with the Lord, it's spirit alive with me. I got 70 foot angelic soldiers to be ready to ride for me. And when the enemy is trying to three, go, everybody say, leave on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Say, God, really, what? Whoa, whoa, I had to bring my cup. One more time, 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 one more one more time, one more one more time, one more Wah wah Say say Wah 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 Are you ready? Without the music One, two, three, everybody say Liva Hey, hey, all praise to the Lord Say, God know the what? Kill him Hey, hey, I didn't bring my call One time, one time, one time, one time Everybody say Liva Ooh, ooh, ooh Say God, no, 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 bless. Hey, I didn't bring my cup. Yeah, 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 yeah. But just get it started. But just get it started. Hey, what next? What next should we do? Can I say? Can I say? You see, that message that Pastor Garrett preached, he said, God is not trying to, to make you unfortunate. God has better plans for you. So when you say that, when God says, give me your life, it's because he wants to give you his life. Right? So that's one of the things that inspired me to write this song. When I say, Oluwami Jo, Madabure Boom, Cover me with your power And then with your Only what I mean Jo, 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 Cover me with your power yeah. okay. So that's why I said I said Every other God is in my mighty Hey, say Lord I go follow you till the end Sacrifice my dreams Wow now you give me life, now your life I live. Yeah. If not to die on top of your mat. Right, let's go. Hey, are you ready? Let's go, set. Hey. Say. Every other God is in my mighty. I go follow you till the end, sacrifice my dreams, 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 dreams. Say, now you give me life, now your life I live, yeah. If not to die on top of your matter, one more time, one more time, every other God is say, every other God is say, my might is. Lord, I go follow you till the end, sacrifice my dream. Say, now you give me life, now your life I live, yeah. Say, if not to die on top of your matter, everybody, one, two. Oluwa mi chowo, madamu rebu, 
cover me with your power. Say, and then with your Oluwami, Oluwami, Joe, Madame Orepumi, cover me with your power. One more time, one more time. Hey, say, say, as I go, as I come so, don't let me fall, don't let me fumble. Making my attack, it's in no big dumbo. Making enemy, no getting out to laugh. Cover me with your noise. Cover me with your power. Everybody, say, one, two, go. Oluwa, cho, 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 kili, cho, 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 ki, cho, ki, cho, kili, cho, cho, cho. Say, say, and then we, Oluwa, me, say, Oluwa, me, cho, wo. Madabo, repo, me. Cover me with your power, yeah. One more time, one more time, hold you on me, Joe. Madabu repu me, cover me with your power, hey. Yeah, hold you on me, Joe. Cover me with your power, hey. You know the song, everybody. Say, come on, cover me with your blood. Cover. Hold on, don't let me fall. Cover me with your blood. Cover me with your blood. Other God is in my mind, is in my mind. Is in my mind. Lord, I go follow you till the end. Now you give me life, now your life I live. Say, if that's what I die, top your mind. One more time, one, two, go. Oluwa mi jo, jo, jo kili jo, jo jo ki jo ki jo kili jo jo jo. Hey, and then we do. Oluwa mi hold. Cover me with your power, yeah. Oh, you are me, yeah. Oh, you are me. Madame Cover me with your power, yeah. So, let me take you back memory lane. Let me take you down memory lane. How many of you remember this song? I want to tell somebody. Do you remember it? Oh, yeah, I am going me sing my song. Oh, today and tomorrow. Testimony, they fall. Now I make me come, they say, Baba. I must to tell some somebody somebody must to know I must to somebody somebody must to know I must to tell somebody somebody must to know eh yeah. yeah. I say night and day is a party for me cause my father steady caring for me all them haters see their busy body. Me no send them, cause you are the one that I see. Ah, all the blessings you they bombard. Me go tell them, me go tell them, say you won't fall. And all the battles you they conquer. Alright, alright, wait, 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 wait. There's one that I know you will know. I know it that you know it. Lingua for the streets of the heaven, I know. Ain't nobody fit to stop my spiritual flow. Stepping out of place with no physical What? You should already I want to Hey! Bera, I want to rabba baba Say! I want to rabba baba Mama Santa ba eh Yeah 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 Bera Yeah! Cool my leg yeah wah 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 Say! Bera! Wah Bera! Lingua for the streets of the heaven, I know, say. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody fit to stop my spiritual flow. Hey, stepping out of place with no physical. So you should already go. I want to rub up. Ay, 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 ay
Satana ma 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 yelelelele na 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 Hey, Maliwa. Okay, okay, let's come back to real time. Hey, what should we do next? Mm. You made me strong like a rock, I'm in greater. Wait, 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 don't worry, don't worry. Have you, know, you know energy? Come on, I say. One, two. Go, can't steal my energy, energy, melody, enemies, enemies, come off it, can't steal my energy, 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 melody, enemies, come off it, oh yeah, now let's go, let's go, are you ready, one, two, one, two, go, cast it, man. Enemies, enemies. Come off it. Cast it, man. Melody. Enemies, enemies. Everybody say, I daily live my life and I mind my business. As I did, daily. Enemies wake come go they fall for me. Enemies wake come go they fall for me. Say, I'm on a meta, I'm on a meta. Everybody say, cause we're not the same. Not one of us, we're not the same. I stay my post When I come out I then get post Cause I pull up inside the host And me and my fellas Hey, and I feel like Tony Tony That's my daddy Baba no baby Go go ibu kunye lo do do Come on kill off one And I feel like Tony Tony That's my daddy Baba no baby Everybody say Cause we're not the same Cause we're not the same We're not there yet, we're not there yet. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Never. Why are they fine? Dr. Foy, see what you have caused. Say Ibuku. Who is Ibuku? Let me tell you something. That even who don't know, they have found why for me. All of you that have been tracking me, because Minister Steve on Sunday have, um, I proposed, you people started tracking me, starting from Dr. Foy, the arrowhead. It's because of the message of God, I'm not doing that portability song. But no problem. No, don't worry. I shall thank God I stand up like what? Dr. Foy's portability. <laughs> they have found right for me. Let me tell you who found right for me. He told me personally. Pastor Howe said he has wife for me. 
Uh, what's her name? What's her name? What's her name? What's the girl that you were there, right? What's her name? He said what? What's her name? Don't worry about her name. He said he said he's a surprise. Is her name How? No, her name is not How. He said that it's a surprise. That according to their culture, they believe in they believe in arranged marriages. So it's a surprise. I stand up, I see my wife, I marry her. Like Jacob and Leah. So don't question, don't question. Who are you to question, Pastor How? Are you older than him? I have a wife that you know not of. In Singapore. Singaporean wife. Everywhere good, no worry. That combination is very good. Great woman, they come. For my education will be, you understand, Neka. Why don't you provoke it, girl? Amen. Are you sure? So when I say, me know they do forecasting, you say, everything nice as he be like, me know they do Even my wife, everything I want, I order. We let it in room, Waiting to pass you in no day. Waiting to pass you in no day. Did it today? Come and do, come and do, do, do. Oh. Okay. Wait, wait. Chena saramo kuki. Chidenu. manager's birthday. This man is such a loyal guy. He's, right now, he's really shy. Such, he, he doesn't take much to win my own heart. And he's such a loyal guy. Everybody, the count of three, you say happy birthday, Ola. One, two, three, let's go! Happy birthday, Ola! That's what's up. Let's go, commando. Hey! 
everything else you go up for. Yeah! Me, I know they to the wrong. Jay, Jay, Jay. Now you make a favor, follow me. You make a blessing, one day, knock my. And if I, and if I want to go on, everybody, everybody say, me Whoa, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Everything I want, say. Everything nice and.
created all things and for thy pleasure. They are. Say thou art what? song I'm guessing you know it but Dr. Foy has used it to pressure my life condemn it condemnation the far away Ibu could just they come my way goodness and mercy sour never never to know now say make nobody bother me I've decided to say all my days now for Jesus to control Everybody say holy water for me ale I no go come for sawale crown of glory ale you the blessed be I don't count on go back I try to come you know I don't check on me you say baba do me correct anointing anointing for and it's steady collect try your face try your face Instructions. You will know that I take this part really seriously. When something is short for you, there's nothing anybody can tell you. When you say it's short for me, you, you go frown your face to like this. You understand? Hey, hey, this babe, I beg, show her face. Hey, erase all her patience, also cool. I need a camera here. <laughs> oh my God. See. Let's go. Baba, do me correct. Anointing. Anointing for. And it's steady collect. Oh yeah. Oh God, is strong. Oh God, is strong. Oh my God. Say, Baba. Do me correct. Anointing. Anointing for. Say. And it's steady collect. Okay, let's go. Oh God, is strong. Let's go. Everybody, you say, Comforter for every. 
every time I've been left for seeking. Them blow me short, but you can't buy down. Never go down, never undertake it. So many times me, I don't fall down. Give me your blessings, you can't give for me. I check my Bible and come God us. I never see your begin for seeking. Everybody say, I don't check him. Everybody, you go. God is sure me say, Baba do me correct. Anointing. Hey, I they steady. Alright. I'm done, I'm done. But just before I go, again, on a very serious note, I really honestly. One more what? What's it I want to see? Time has gone. I really want to appreciate DJ Paul, Pastor Boju. To be honest, thank you for for literally pouring yourself into this next generation. Yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Hey, 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 what, what, hey, DJ, DJ Paul. DJ Paul, we wanna give us DJ Paul, DJ Paul, DJ Paul, hey, DJ Paul, DJ. Thank you very much. I love you all. God bless you. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! All right. We have come to the end of the youth rally. Shout if you want to shout. Shout if you want to shout. Do you want another round of this tomorrow? Do you want another round of this tomorrow? All right. We'll wait for another public holiday. So let's stand up on our feet. I want everyone to stand up on our feet everywhere you are. Just stand up on your feet. Lift up your hands. Wave your hands to God. Just give him thanks. Give him thanks everywhere you are. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise. Thank you for what you have done for us. Thank you for the grace that you have released into every life. Thank you for the joy of the Holy Spirit. We bless and exalt your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen.
So let's share the grace and fellowship. After the count of two, one, two, go. Amen. God bless you.